The Science of Nuclear Fission and Nuclear Fusion First, we will discuss nuclear fission. Nuclear fission is a process during which a heavy atom is broken into two smaller atoms by a neutron fired at it. When the neutron hits the heavy atom, the atom splits into two other atoms which have the same number of protons combined as the first atom, but they don't have the same number of neutrons. Two or three neutrons from the heavy atom were knocked away. If there is a critical mass of uranium, or any other heavy element, which means a mass that can sustain a nuclear chain reaction, the neutrons knocked away from the initial heavy atom will hit other atoms. Those other atoms will fission too, and that will start the nuclear chain reaction. The way energy is released during nuclear fission is by the release of extra neutrons, which releases binding energy, energy that binds the protons and neutrons in the nucleus together. Binding energy, when it has nothing to bind, dissipates its energy through an explosion. The explosion of the binding energy released by fission of one atom is not very much, about 180 megavolts. But when a critical mass of several billion heavy atoms fissions, the binding energy released is very powerful, millions of billions of volts. And this chain reaction happens in five blinks of an eye, or around two seconds. There are four main stages to the process of nuclear fission. The first stage is the full nucleus stage. The second stage is the oval stage. The third stage is the peanut shape, and the fourth stage is the two new atoms. The concept of nuclear fission has been widely used in nuclear bombs like the Trinity and the Fat Man and Little Boy designs. Nuclear fission can also occur when a heavy atom decays and emits an alpha particle. The alpha particle is made up of two neutrons and two protons, and those two neutrons cause the heavy atom that the alpha particle collides with to fission. There is an interesting case of nuclear fission in which the heavy atom breaking up makes three other atoms instead of two. These are relatively rare and only happen every two to four out of a thousand times. Nuclear fission was first proven by experiment in 1938 when physicists Otto Hahn and Fritz Strassmann created the first man-made instance of controlled nuclear fission. Several scientists before Hahn and Strassmann, such as Henry Becquerel, Marie Curie, Pierre Curie, Ernest Rutherford, Enrico Fermi, and Niels Bohr had contributed to the problem. Now, we will discuss nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is a process during which two atoms combine and make a bigger atom. The result of nuclear fusion is a bigger atom that has the same number of protons as the first two atoms combined and an extra neutron. Nuclear fusion creates three to four times as much energy as nuclear fission, and that is because little energy is needed to keep the resulting atoms' protons and neutrons together compared to the energy needed to keep the protons and neutrons of the initial atoms together. Basically, binding energy is released because less is needed, and that binding energy explodes. Another reason that there is more binding energy is because of the temperature of the atom when the process of fusion is happening. Fusion needs a couple of thousand degrees for the atoms to start fusing, even if the atoms are of the lightest element, hydrogen. Fission, on the other hand, can occur at almost any temperature. The heat of fusion excites the protons and neutrons in the atom's nucleus, making it harder to keep them together. So the binding force released by two or three neutrons from the uranium atom is only a small part of the total binding energy of the atom, while the binding force released by the one neutron from the tritium and deuterium fusion is a significant part of the total binding energy. Nuclear fusion is the same process that powers stars such as our sun. However, in stars, some of the mass is converted to photons, which is what makes the sun bright. Nuclear fusion also powers hydrogen bombs, but not fully, since a nuclear fission reaction is used to begin the process. Nuclear fusion, unlike nuclear fission, is very easy to control, and therefore easier to harness for electrical energy. The most widely used method for confining a plasma for fusion is the tokamak method, developed by Russian scientists Igor Tam and Andrei Sakharov, which involves a torus-shaped metal container with electromagnetic wires all around it. Estimates have placed the date of arrival of the nuclear fusion reactor sometime in 2022, but the estimates could change. Thank you for watching this documentary, and if you enjoyed it, give it a like, maybe a favorite, or you could even subscribe to our channel and help support us.